Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'm continuing the Grunfeld series with the F3 anti Grunfeld, which is a very uncomfortable variation for black to face. I have to say, I have played the Grunfeld for over a year, and facing this is always troublesome. And I will give you two reasons. Firstly, uh, this gives white an option to avoid the Grunfeld before black gets to play the move d5. Secondly, uh, black has to enter sharp positions. Now, you might say the Grunfeld is sharp anyway, and it is. It often leads to very tactical battles with a center that's blown open and with both sides uh, trying to attack. But the F3 anti Grunfeld is more aggressive for white, and it's sort of the improved version of, uh, of uh, the Yugoslav or the English attack, uh, which white can play against the Sicilian and it's often uh, a situation with opposite side castling in which white is faster and black cannot avoid it. So uh, after the move d4 uh, black plays the move knight f6, white plays the move c4, black plays g6 and now uh, as you may know if white plays the move knight c3 black is simply going to play the move d5 enter the Grunfeld. Now, before we get to the f3 anti Grunfeld, I would just like to point out that there is a variation after d5 in which white can go for f3, but that's not the f3 anti Grunfeld. That's the Lutikov variation of the Grunfeld and it's not as, as sharp. So if white plays f3 here, we would get bishop g7 and e4, white expands in the center, d4, fe4, and now e5. Uh, after e5, uh, taking on e5 is not favorable because black can simply take here, recapture the pawn later on something like knight d7. So white should play the move d5, black castles, knight f3. And now the undermining starts, c6 undermining the pawn structure. Bishop d3 is the best move, reinforcing the center, and now b5. And there really is no pleasant option for white to keep his central structure. Uh, the engines are always going to prefer white, of course, but I think that uh, the Lutikov variation is less good than the F3 anti Grunfeld, and you don't have the sharp position that the anti Grunfeld gives. So let's say castles, which is the best move, bc4, bishop c4, cd5. In this position, you can play knight d5. This is a tricky variation, and if knight e4, uh, white is simply going to continue with the move queen e4, attacking the knight. f5 is too risky. Uh, but knight f6, and now after bishop g5, white is almost winning, or winning, yeah, but after knight takes d5, black doesn't have to blunder with knight takes e4, and the position is equal, white doesn't have a center, and basically it's, it's a symmetrical, well, it's an almost symmetrical pawn structure where white has a 2 to 1 on the queen side, but it's really hard to utilize, and Black's uh, Grunfeld bishop is somewhat dampened, but uh, on the other hand, he can open it up with, with an f5 break later on. So after d4, knight f6, c4, g6, don't play the move knight c3 if you want to play the, the anti Grunfeld, play f3 immediately. And now, since your knight hasn't been developed to c3 yet, you haven't given uh, Black the option to play the move d5 yet. And if black wants to play the Grunfeld in a Grunfeld fashion, he has to play d5 now. And we are going to get into the madness of those lines in a second. I would just like to point out that black can still go for the same ish king's Indian with the move bishop g7. And now after e4, we have the move d6, knight c3, castles. And here we are in the same ish king's Indian. If you don't know the theory in that variation, uh, check out the video. I have made a separate video on the same ish. So one thing I would like to point out that is if you are trying to enter the anti Grunfeld with f3, you might still be playing a highly theoretical Samish King's Indian if black chooses to do that. And in fact, many Grunfeld players have a pet line prepared uh, in the Samish King's Indian to make sure they could face the anti Grunfeld with that. Because uh, the lines we are going to see now uh, in my opinion, are worse for black than the same as King's Indian, which I also prefer, prefer for white. But if black now chooses to go uh, all in, play the move d5, play the uh, Grunfeld against the anti Grunfeld, we get a very sharp forcing variation for the next five moves. 
uh, we have c takes d5 uh, using the fact that he has uh, an option to uh, to take a central pawn for a flank pawn knight takes d5 and now if you notice the difference uh, there is no knight on c3 in the exchange variation of the grunfeld where white now plays the move e4 black has the option of capturing on c3 so e4 knight c3 b c3 and black has the grunfeld center with c3 d4 and d4 white i'm sorry but black is able to undermine it with the move bishop g7 and the move c5 in this variation uh, capturing on c3 is not possible so after e4 the knight simply has to go back f6 would be far too dangerous uh, so f6 is not advisable the only move for the knight is knight b6 and now you sort of have an Elekine defense knight from f6 to d4 to b6. And you could argue that the knight is misplaced. Now, what's White's plan? Let's briefly look at this position. Firstly, you have this sort of English Yugoslav attack setup with pawns on e4 and f3. That means that uh, your kingside attack is already ready made. The move g4 is reinforced, the bishop cannot take. So g4 always is a possibility and it sort of is a free move in the attack. Secondly, black has played the move g6, uh, of course, since it's, since it's a fianchetto pos position getting ready to get into the Grunfeld, and against all fianchetto positions, h4, h5 is a strong attacking idea. So you have two attacking ideas which are ready-made and which black cannot really stop. Furthermore, black is two ways, two moves away from castling. His next two moves have to be bishop g7 and castles, otherwise he's going to get just run, run over. So what white wants to do in this aggressive anti grunfeld the move f3 reinforced the center, uh, defended e4, didn't develop the knight to c3 to make sure that the, that the knight from d5 cannot capture on c3, and white now wants to develop as quickly as possible and put pressure on the king side. What does white do? Uh, the same plan you play against the Sicilian defense in many positions. You play knight c3, bishop e3, queen d2. These are going to be your moves. Knight c3, bishop e3, queen d2, castles long. You might wonder, well, isn't it risky to castle, to castle kingside with the c file open? Well, you are going to follow uh, that up with the move king b1. That's going to be your fifth move. And from there on, uh, you are just going to try to checkmate black. That's the point of the F3 anti Grunfeld. So let's continue with the plans for both sides. We know what both sides have to do. Knight c3 for white, bishop g7 for black has to be played. Bishop e3, the most natural developing move, wants to play queen d2, wants to castle kingside, go for a kingside, uh, wants to castle queenside and go for a kingside attack. Black castles, queen d2, and now black needs to develop. Uh, the move knight c6 is the only move played here. Uh, if you can see, uh, the c8 bishop doesn't really have a useful square. Uh, the c6 knight, on the other hand, could be a very useful piece. Now, there is, of course, a downside to this aggressive strategy white is employing. He is leaving a lot of weaknesses on the queen side, and he is leaving a lot of holes on the queen side, particularly the c4 square, which can be very uh, useful for black. If white ever plays the move b3, then you can see that, firstly, this diagonal is very weak, and the Grunfeld bishop comes to the spotlight. Secondly, uh, a5, a4 would have a target to undermine. So the move knight c6 is very logical because of knight a5 and knight c4. The c4 square is often uh, the weakest point in the Grunfeld defense, especially in the exchange variation where bc uh, happens and there is no pawn to evict the knight. But here as well, since white is castling queenside, it would be unwise to play the move b3. And now, white castles. And here we come to the first branching in the position. If you play the anti Grunfeld against an experienced Grunfeld, Grunfeld player, this is what you are going to have on the board. Uh, Black now has to choose what to do. There are three moves f5, e5, and queen d6. f5 is completely mad, uh, it's a very theoretical move. However, uh, it leads to the sharpest positions in the anti Grunfeld. e5 is slightly more positional, but also very sharp, and queen d6 is considered to be the main line, and I would say that queen d6 requires the most, uh, the biggest knowledge of theory in the anti Grunfeld, and if you play the anti Grunfeld, queen d6 is a move you are going to have to learn 
in detail because it doesn't the moves don't come as natural as in e5 and f5 lines but let's look at the side lines first e5 is the least common move so let's look at that of course taking would liberate the bishop so you never want to do that whenever black plays e5 in these lines you want to meet it with uh, d5 in this case of course it does also chase the knight away now knight a5 here I'm not sure it's a good move, even though you have double support of c4. You want your knight on d4, and you want your bishop to get open. This knight, once it gets to d4, is a permanent knight. Uh, if white ever takes on d4, then white is simply going to be worse, uh, because the black bishop is going to be monstrous, uh, and there are going to be a couple of tempi on the c3 knight, and black would then later on play the move d3 so the knight on d4 uh, is a very good piece it could be uh, shoved away later on with the move such as knight e2 but we are going to get to that uh, the most common strategy instead of knight d2 is simply undermining this structure and knight d2 could be a useful move but in fact let's see that uh, i'm going to turn on the engine for this one for knight d2 uh, yeah, but yeah, okay, I'm sorry about that. Not here, because you lose the bishop, you have to figure out what to do with your bishop first. But later on in the game, if you could play something like uh, exchanging your bishop first, for example, like bishop h6, exchanging the bishop, then knight d2 could be, could be an option, but not here. So the best move, uh, the only move here, where your uh, queen and bishop are on pre, if you allow knight c4, as I said, c4 is a huge hole, is the move f4. You want to undermine the defense of the knight. Of course, if black takes on f4, queen takes d4, uh, wins a piece and wins the game. So black continues aggressively with the move c5. Now, taking Ampasan, uh, firstly, would allow b takes, which could reinforce the knight once again and open up the b file. It could also allow knight takes, which isn't as good, but could also be playable. Uh, since the queen is still defended on d8 by the knight and by the rook. But I think if I'm Passan, uh, uh, this should suffice. And the b file is open, c5 is coming. If you take here, bishop takes, the knight is... Uh, well, uh, the knight can be defended with c5, and then you could go on from there. The point is, I don't think that it's wise to open up all of these lines and allow black a free attack. I would argue that black is faster in the attack now. Uh, okay, so after c5, the main move for white is f takes e5, uh, undermining the knight from that side. And now bishop g4, a tempo on the rook, is the best move. Uh, taking on e5 can be played, but it's played one move later, after the, move, uh, the rook moves to e1. Black basically says, I want to remove your defenders from the d-file. It could be useful in stopping the spawn, it could be useful in undermining the attack on the knight. So bishop takes e5 now, h3 chases the bishop away, and now you could move the bishop away, but queen h4 is cooler, attacks the rook, you cannot take the bishop. Uh, bishop d3 finally uh, develops the light squared bishop. Now if the knight is ever developed, uh, h takes is actually a threat, rook ac8, and the position continues from here. You can see that it's sharp, that it's imbalanced, there is a lot of peace tension in the center, uh, the g4 bishop is hanging, the d4 knight is still a monster piece and it's going to be hard to get rid of it. So if you want a tricky variation for black, uh, which is the second sharpest variation, play this. Your knight on d4 is going to be a great piece. If you're white here, note that the engine always gives this as better for white. And if you learn the lines properly, you should have an advantage. So e5 is not the most precise move for black. After castles, uh, I would say the trickiest move uh, for black to play, uh, but if he knows it, he could be fine, is f5. This now leads to my favorite positions in the anti-Grunfeld. This is what I'm preparing to play against Grunfeld players and hoping that they are going to play f5. Uh, White has two moves here. Uh, one of them is sounder, one of them is more fun. The sounder move is e5. Uh, shutting of the bishop, knight b4, uh, is the most aggressive move, looking to get into the to, into the d5 square, where now, uh, of course, the, the pawn has moved away, and also threatening a lot of stuff. I mean, it's, it's hard to play with those two knights in the middle of your position. Knight h3 is the main move. 
bishop e6, reinforcing the squares, the light squares once again. And you can see that since the pawn has moved to e5, black has a tremendous amount of light squared control. And it's going to be really hard for white to contest that c4 is forever lost, d5 is forever lost, b3 is weak, a2 is weak, and white could get in trouble on the light squares. So king b1, queen d7, uh, threatening perhaps to come into, into the a4 square, knight f4, attacking the bishop, uh, bishop f7, saving the bishop, and now h4. Now you go for a, for a kingside attack uh, with the very sharp uh, pawn push on the h-file. Rook f to the 8, a3. And now, uh, the best way for black to continue this position is not simply retreating the knight. Uh, if he goes to c6, then I believe d5 is uh, probably winning for, for white. If you go to d5, a lot of exchanges happen, and white still has an attack along the h-file, with h5 coming. So the only move to stay in the game is a5. And now, uh, of course, if white takes, uh, a takes b, a takes b, your knight has to move, let's say, knight to e2. Now you are getting mated, rook a1 check. Uh, you have to take, uh, king takes a1, queen a4 check, uh, king b1, queen a2 check. It's defended by the bishop. King c1, queen a1 check, and now king c2. Uh, bishop b3 check. Uh, well, I mean, you, you have to take, if you take, it's it's checkmate in one, there's, I mean. So anyway, after the move a5, white cannot take the knight, and white just ignores, uh, ignores the fact that black is sacrificing his piece, so you continue with h5. After h5, you're pushing for a kingside attack, g5, uh, knight d3, uh, challenging the, the knight, knight c4. Attacking the bishop, attacking the queen, queen c1, knight takes d3, bishop takes d3, knight e3, queen e3, queen d4, and as it often happens in very sharp lines, a lot of exchanges are going to occur on the board. In this position, the queen can simply take on g5 and not be afraid, h6 and queen f5. Uh, black here can get the pawn back with queen takes e5, and of course queen h7 doesn't bring anything, so sadly this position is completely equal. Black has the bishop pair, uh, black has five pawns, white has five pawns, and black has uh, a less safe king, but uh, with the bishop pair uh, there should be enough compensation. So after f5, if white plays the move e5, you can expect crazy lines with the black knight coming into b4, but they are less sharp than, than what I'm about to show you now. Uh, after f5, my absolute favorite way to play uh, the anti Grunfeld is h4 here. Uh, and h4 is madness. Uh, Black should play fe4. And you, of course, ignore that because you are, you are trying to checkmate. Uh, you don't want to take, even though you, you could, just h5, undermining the structure some more. And if you look at these pieces, uh, it's going to be really hard for Black to play. Uh, this position. gh5 is the best move you don't want to allow uh, hg. Rook h5, bishop f5, white now tries to, black now tries to develop, get his bishop to, to g6 and to defend. Rook g5, uh, a great attacking position. Black should now play bishop g6 and from here uh, black wins most of the games uh, on master level but I would always rather be white here. I don't know what you think. I think that this position is great for uh, for white, and I think that there are a lot of prospects in this position because the black king is so unsafe. Uh, black wins most of the games on master level, but uh, the engine thinks that white is slightly better. As you can see here, plus 0.7, almost plus 1, uh, if, you, if you let it think for a while. So definitely a playable position. So if you want the sharpest line possible, and if black plays f5, Go with h4, fe4, h5, gh5, rook h5. After gh5, uh, there is a better move uh, which you can try instead of taking uh, with rook takes h5, which the engine prefers, and that's the move d5. After d5, knight e5, you can now play bishop h6. Uh, this pawn is sufficiently defended, and the best move is knight e to c4 attacking the queen, 
and you continue with queen g5 and you can see that this is getting really uh, sharp rook f7 the only defense rook h4 and after something like queen d6 trying to defend bishop takes g7 rook takes g7 something like queen h5 can be really dangerous looking at, at the e8 square bishop d7 is the only move here and once again i was i would always rather be uh, white here rook takes e4 it's playable for both sides with perfect play black is fine probably because uh, the engines can defend and 2800 players can defend but somebody 2000 or 1700 is going to struggle to defend this position okay so that was the move f5 so after f5 you can play e5 which is less sharp or you can play h4 which i would definitely advise and now the best move for black uh, if not e5 or f5 is the move queen d6 and this as i said is a pretty forcing line which you just have to remember if you are going to play the anti grunfeld here you can continue with knight b5 or king b1 they transpose i would recommend the move king b1 is just safer rook d8 developing the rook and now knight b5 attacking the queen uh, the queen obviously has to move uh, the only square is d7 now you play d5 um, d5 is the sharpest move once again knight e5 i don't think is the best move it can be played though but it's fairly risky you can then come into c4 and put pressure on on the bishop and the queen uh, in this position uh, knight e5 has only play, been played eight times and after knight e5 white wins most of the games with the move queen c2 simply defending uh, the c4 square so after d5 a6 is the best move because you sort of just chase the knight away and force it to move uh, white doesn't want to take on c6 and allow uh, a trade and a takes b because the b file opens up and it's going to be really hard to play after bishop e6 if you can see that so if dc6 queen d2 rook d2 rook d2 bishop d2 a b5 you can try cb7 bishop b7 but the bishop is still going to come to the diagonal and even if you drop this pawn i think that black is going to have sufficient compensation uh because of the bishop pair uh which is aiming towards the white king and because of the rook on the open file so the main move after a6 is knight c3 after knight c3 uh you don't have to move the knight away if you do move the knight away, uh, that's fine, but queen e8 is the best move now, uh, defending indirectly because the pawn now cannot take, the queen is loose. So queen c1 saving the queen, and now knight a5. Uh, once again, you could go to e5, but in this position f4 could be uh, a tricky move to face, followed by bishop d4 challenging the g7 bishop. And now h4. This is all theory, and all of this you have to know. Uh, black is aiming... At the queen side with his knight with his queen sometimes uh, the bishop can get, get into play the rook can get into play via d6 and b6 or c6 and all sorts of attacking possibilities are possible e6 is the most principled move just challenging the center bishop f4 looking at the c7 pawn which is a dangerous threat queen e7 defending and now bishop g5 an intermezzo move f6 and the black king is once again weak here you can choose bishop d2 or bishop e3 i prefer the move bishop e3 but this now allows e d5 bishop b6 which you have to take that was the point of uh of bishop e3 c b6 knight d5 and something like king f7 and once again white is supposed to have a slight advantage but both kings are are unsafe and it's going to be hard to play for both sides now if I were black, I would consider a plan like b5 and knight c4, trying to weaken the, the white king further, develop the bishop somewhere, probably to e6, looking at the a2 pawn, I'm sorry, looking at the a2 pawn, and then something like rook c8. And it's hard to say who is faster and who is better. It's the only thing that's certain is that this position is interesting to play, and it's probably not going to end in a draw, especially on any level below i would say 2200 and uh, if you are looking for a uh, for a fun weapon to fight the grunfeld with if you are looking for something to get the grunfeld player uh, out of his prep uh, play the anti grunfeld it's really fun just remember not to play knight c3 play f3 immediately after 
on move 3, yeah, after bishop g7, after g6. So once again, d4, knight f6, c4, g6, play f3 immediately. And once again, black can go for the same king's Indian with bishop g7, uh, but if he goes for d5, remember uh, the first nine moves, cd5, knight d5, e4, knight b6, knight c3, bishop g7, and now you want to go queen side, so bishop e3, queen d2, castles. And remember that black has e5, f5, or queen d6 here. Remember how to fight against each one. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video on the anti Grunfeld extra content uh, coming to the Patreon feed. Visit the link in the description below and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.